So I felt like this would be a fitting way to start this show, and I wanted to recite a few lyrics from a song from a band that I discovered when I was about 13 years old, and definitely had an influence on me and my thought process of the world. And so with that being said, the Dead Kennedys, Nazi punks fuck off. Punk ain't no religious cult. Punk means thinking for yourself. You ain't hardcore because you spike your hair when a jock still lives inside your head. Nazi punks, Nazi punks, Nazi punks, fuck off. Nazi punks, Nazi punks, Nazi punks, fuck off. Eddie? Yes, very well said, Ray. Uh, It's hard to top that. It's the beginning of the show, so you know what time it is. It is time to go to work. Woo! The Jerk of All Trades podcast. We are live and direct. In living color. In, in living audio. <laughs> no. Yes. And we got a great show this week, Ray. You want to tell them about it? Absolutely, man. Great show lined up for them. I'm not going to list all the topics off for you guys this week. Yeah, we got two episodes this week, so we're hitting you with a little one-hour action. And, uh, <clears throat> and we're going to start the show off with a little middle finger of the week, right? Yes, middle finger of the week. And usually it's pretty hard to look to find the middle finger of the week. But this week, there was some pretty evident douchebaggery in this world. And so, yeah, here's our easiest middle finger of the week ever. And it's not even close. So, Eddie, Nazi domestic terrorism and the angle of... It not really paying off for you. No, it didn't work out too well for these guys here. Um, Unless you've been living under a rock or something, you've heard about the incident in Charlottesville, Virginia this week. 34 people were wounded during a Unite the Right march, and a woman was killed after being struck by a car. Two two state troopers died in a helicopter crash. And uh, I cannot believe it's the year 2017. And we have people still living like it's like 1930, 1940 or something. It's almost like a hundred-year-old mentality that still is somehow, uh, you know, prevalent in this society. It's insane to me, man. I can't believe that there are people that are identifying themselves as straight-up Nazis. It's not even like, you know, people get called, oh, you know, he's a Nazi. What? I, no, these people are literally Nazis. They have Nazi flags. Like, that is their whole entire deal. Um, and somehow we have our president that's, you know, defending them and the fact that, hey, you know, they just kind of showed up. And, you know, that wasn't – everyone at the march wasn't uh, wasn't a Nazi. Well, I mean – if if I'm having a if I'm having a house party and a bunch of Nazis show up with Nazi flags and stuff, I'm probably and tiki torches. <laughs> and tiki torches. I actually have tiki torches in my backyard. I have the same tiki torches that Hey, the, uh, put that tiki torch back now. <laughs> that the Nazis apparently like. But yeah, um I'm gonna ask the Nazis to probably leave. That's gonna be what I'm gonna do. So I think, you know, by not doing that, come on. Yeah, they're you're just as bad as them. And your rhetoric is really not all that far removed from what they're saying. They're just being more out front with it. And so, yeah, obviously they're, you know, fucking douchebags. And just, so they get the middle finger. Oh, absolutely. It's up there. Uh, j- just when you think, like, we're progressing as a society, as a culture, gay people are getting married. Like, you know, we have transgender people being socially accepted. And then, like, out of nowhere, we just get these crazy white people and their Nazi stuff. And it's like, you're not moving forward. You're you're moving backward. Like, this is stuff that we fought for in World War II. It's just like, what are you trying to hold on to that matters so much to you? I don't get it. Yeah, it's, 
I, I, I just don't understand. I think it's, you know, they really, you know, they're, it's the whole, well, you know, what's wrong? There's a, you know, there's a, there's a BET channel. Why can't there be a white entertainment channel? And, you know, Hey, there's black, there's black history month. So there should be white history month. And here's the thing. Like you, you are the predominant race. You are the winner. So yeah. you are the one that has been suppressing people. So the reason why these, these marches and things exist is because these are an entire group of people that have been suppressed and, you know, Hey, their people got brought over on boats, uh, in well, chains. You know, and yeah, so they you had to sit in the back of the bus. They had to use their own bathrooms, use their own right. water fountains. Like it, it's all really, really silly. I don't know if it's the education system or just bigotry as a whole. But uh, it's got to go. Like the Jerk of All Trades podcast, if you're listening to this, you know we're all about progression, moving forward, onward and upward. Not learning. regression. Yes, not regression whatsoever. We're learning new things. We're performing, uh, acting out new ideas. And uh, we ain't got time for these fucking retarded ass Nazis. I'll we ain't right got now. time for that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, moving on. Those goddamn tiki torches, Ray. What the fuck? Yeah. So the angle of this, you know, we're not going to harp on all the stuff that you probably heard elsewhere. But, yeah, the uh, <laughs> so the intro- it looked like a, a barbecue gone wrong. <laughs> the uh, with, with their goddamn polo shirts and such. Oh, my uh, God. Um, tiki torches that they I bought. I hate to from- laugh. I mean, people did die. But just the asinine looking people involved in this is kind of silly yeah it's really quite ridiculous so yeah they were uh so tiki brand (laughs) products uh has denounced the use of their torches for the white supremacist march uh as you probably would because you know you're it's you know an island thing right so uh yeah clearly not you know an anglo uh american uh you know white thing so sure tiki yeah not uh not coming from europe so yeah they said uh yeah we don't like you guys using our torches so they're gonna have to find some off-brand torches or something from the dollar store i'm not even sure i, I feel like tiki kind of has like the lock hold on i know the, the, on the, I, I mean that's another one of those things where they're they're branded they're as the, w- the name of the brand you know it's like band-aids yeah they're the wwe of uh tiki torches right. yeah they have a monopoly on the tiki tour i don't even know what the the Non tiki yeah. torch name What's of the that? second place uh selling tiki torches. You don't know. I, it doesn't yeah, exist. I'm, I'm, I mean, is there like a more proper name of them that's not you know the brand name? I, I really don't know that. It's and, so strange. Yeah. So if you know what the actual like, I mean, is that what they're actually just called, or is there some sort of more proper name like you know? As long as I can remember, bandage. Yeah. As long as I can remember, they've been called tiki torches. Yeah. So. Yeah. I've never known them as anything else. So, uh, but yeah, that wasn't it. Uh, Twitter and Facebook have come out. Uh, Zuckerberg came out and had a long diatribe about it um and they're removing any racist and uh, hate accounts from their platforms um you've got GoDaddy and squarespace who are booting uh racist websites uh, there's one in particular called the daily stormer um that really has taken a big hit from this um you've got apple pay uh is uh going to disable support for websites that are selling nazi or white pride sweaters and t-shirts uh apparently you know if you have like a bandana or uh you know boxers or something that's okay but sweaters t-shirts is uh, off. yeah don't take away my nazi socks <laughs> right <laughs> got swastikas on only every only single... sweaters and t-shirts <laughs> no just kidding yeah it's uh, come it's, on apple you know, uh spotify is removing material that uh favors hatred or incites violence against race religion and sexuality uh reddit uh i've been a redditor for a long time they have banned several far right and neo-nazi subreddits since charlottesville including one called physical removal uh, I thought this was interesting. OK Cupid yeah. has actually uh, laid the ban hammer down to uh, there was a white supremacist. His name was Christopher Cantwell. Um, and he yeah, apparently can't get along with people. Well. It looks like he's on to farmersdaughters.com or something. I don't know. <laughs> he's got to move on. OK Cupid ain't playing that shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's good to yeah, see these companies uh, yeah. taking a stand uh, for, for doing and doing the right thing for the good of the people. So. Yeah, round absolutely. of applause from your boy Eddie the Jerk. Absolutely. Uh, one one uh, other last thing that I wanted to kind of talk about on this was free speech. So I see a lot in comment chains on uh, things revolving around this, and not even coming from people who are supporting that movement, but they get upset when you know, let's say Tiki Brand Torches says we don't want you to use our Tiki torches. Or, you know, when Apple or uh, Apple Pay or PayPal or that type of thing um, says that they're not going to allow payments to go towards websites like this. Um, 
people start decrying free speech. And I don't think that people really fully understand what free speech is. So freedom of speech is government mandated. It is not something that private brands have to adhere to. This is like saying that Walmart has to sell Nazi sweaters. You know, if they so choose based on their business model that they don't feel that it is in the best interest of their business to be supporting something like this, they don't have to do that. You know, if Apple Pay doesn't want to allow their payments to be utilized by, you know, alt-right Nazi websites, they don't have to do that. They have the choice. Okay, Cupid doesn't have to hook up Nazis. Like they can say, <laughs> hey, we Nazis, if you want to get laid, if you want to go on a nice date somewhere to like the Nazi rally or something, you're going to have to find another website or another way to do that. And that's freedom of speech is from the government. If the government is telling you that you don't have the right to do that or you don't, don't have the right to say whatever idiotic thing that it is that you're going to say or possibly not idiotic um, they don't, these private brands don't have to allow oh, you to utilize their service if you're agree. doing it in the wrong way. I agree a hundred percent. If you want to hook up with your racist Nazi, uh, other, uh, chicks and dudes out there, go start your own Nazi dating website and you pathetic losers can hook up. Good with luck yourselves. finding hosting though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good luck with all that. Uh, yeah. just one thing to add to this is just when our forefathers wrote the constitution, it was a little bit different, man. There was no Twitter, Facebook, internet, television. Like it was, a, it was a lot different back in those days. So, the the issues that are prevalent today weren't around in, even remotely back in the back in those days. So, yeah, the avenues in which you get your speech out there are quite a bit different. But what people are failing to realize is that these are services that you are utilizing this is I oh mean, sure if it was a government-based social media that yeah. would be a different story but it's not so nope. those are all businesses you know if you want to start your own you know nazi facebook which i'm sure exists or nazi twitter or whatever you you're more than free to be able to do that yeah so. ray nailed it on this one absolutely so being a racist is an example of one of the worst personality traits any person can have so it's only fitting we go from one of the best or, I'm sorry, we go from one of the worst to one of the best. Yeah, that's probably... <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah. Eddie thinks racism and Nazis are the best. Number one. Number one thing. Let's find, let's talk about the story I found on Twitter. Bruno Mars and his recent massive donation in Michigan. Bruno Mars recently donated $1 million to Flint, Michigan to aid in the water crisis. Very cool, man. Very cool. This is awesome. I, I read it and I liked it immediately. Uh, he partnered up with Live Nation after a surprise concert at the Palace of Auburn Hills. Uh, he told the crowd afterwards he was donating $1 million to help Flint residents deal with the ongoing, ongoing contaminated water crisis. The crisis started in early 2014 when the city of Flint switched its water source. The water later tested positive for E. coli and elevated levels of lead causing President, President Barack Obama to declare a federal state of emergency in the city, freeing up $5 million to cover bottled water and filters. Awesome move by the president there. Absolutely. But still ongoing issues. And uh, the donation went to Community Foundation of Greater Flint. It's so awesome when you donate money to a charity and it actually goes to the chair or goes to the yeah, people. Very, very true. They're, they're trying to support. I don't know if we talked about this on the podcast before, but I'm pretty sure we've talked about it where a lot of these charities, there's a lot of smoke screen and uh, money not going where it's promised Susan to go. Susan Coleman, I'm looking at you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, big up to Bruno Mars, getting the money to where it needs to be to help people. And uh, <clears throat> Mars said, as people, especially Americans, we need to stand together to make sure something like this never happens in any community ever again. I believe last week we talked about, you know, uh, food waste and, and people in other countries not being able to get water, clean water to drink. We're having this issue right now in Flint, Michigan. Like they're having to use wa filtered water and bottled water just to drink some water and you have to have water to live. So. Yeah, it's definitely a right. And I'll tell you what, another thing branching off of this is the fucking Nestle corporation and their shitty CEO. And when this whole thing was first happening, he came out and he claims that he was taken out of context, but he basically said that people do not have the right to clean water. Um, That's so fucked up. And so, Basically, what's happening is, is that Nestle is coming in 
They are extracting billions of dollars worth of groundwater from Western Michigan. It only pays $200 a year in paperwork fees to do this. That's it. Um, so they've been doing this, and now Nestle wants to more than triple its pumping in the region from 150 gallons per minute to 400 gallons a minute, which is absolutely ridiculous. So th this is not good enough. So you've got an area where people can't get clean water out of their faucet, and so Nestle is literally stealing the water, and then they're you know using their bullshit filtration system, and then reselling this water to these people who have no other choice. God, um, that is so dark. That is so dark. Yeah, um, yeah. Fuck Nestle, dude. Fuck Nestle. Definitely not about that. They can get the middle finger too. This isn't the right segment, but uh, yeah. low key, maybe not so low key, middle finger to Nestle on this. Yeah, and uh, in 2015, they were also sued for using expired permits. To pump uh, millions of gallons worth of water. Um, that was from uh, San Bernardino, uh, California. Cali, Cali. Um, so, yeah, it's not, you know, they're paying, you know, bullshit, uh, you know, a couple hundred dollars to be able to pump all this water out. And then they can't even keep their fucking permits on the up and up. Like, give me a oh, freaking dude. break. Yeah, laziness. It is just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so, fuck Nestle. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I'm done with Nestle as of today. So yeah. uh, no more money from your boy Eddie the Jerk on those Nestle Crunch yeah, I'm gonna get, bars. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm a, I'll be getting some Hershey's up in here. Yeah. So Maybe they're, a little they're bit chocolates of Mars. better anyway. How about so. some Mars? Yeah, Bruno Mars and Mars candy bars. How do you like There that? you go. The battle lines are drawn. Yeah. Bruno, <laughs> Bruno Mars candy bars. Bruno Mars, you should start. Uh, get your own candy bar out there to compete directly with Nestle. So Absolutely. That would be, that would be the shit. Well, hold on to your horses. Because the universal call out is next. That story was pretty damn cool if you ask me. If you have if we had more guys like Bruno Mars in this world, it'd be a much better place. But let's switch gears here and go to the results of the last last week's Universal Call Out Balloons. Balloons, which came from Ray the Jerk. He defeated Eddie in uh, you the crushed rock, it, in the rock, paper, scissors battle. Um so we yep. got stories on top of stories on top of balloon stories this yes. week tell them about yeah. it the uh the, the tension is there as you wait for us to tell you the balloon stories <laughs> like we got a pin and it's right next to that balloon and, oh my god are we gonna pop oh no. boom 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 so let's start off with scientists finding the balloon around your head uh which is basically the personal space that is around your body um so uh, here's kind of some of the stuff from the article. Before you know uh, know where the wasp is, you flinch. Each of us has this space around our bodies that is extremely sensitive to external stimuli. It is an evolutionary advantage to be hyper alert to threats nearby as they're more likely to cause you harm a lot sooner. Uh, they measured a person's personal space with a blink uh, reflex experiment. The brain continuously updates the threat value of stimuli based on gravitational cues. The number one priority for human brain is avoiding being squashed from above. That's my priority. <laughs> Absolutely. That is a good priority Hell to yeah. have. Uh, so, yeah, they uh, they say that there is an obvious evolutionary advantage to being aware of threats from above. Gravity causes objects to fall. Hit you in the head. Not good. No. Uh, in other words, the number one priority for the human brain is avoiding being squashed from above. I believe Eddie said that that's one of his priorities and also mine. Hell yeah. Um, some animals, like snakes, are more likely to receive their threats from below and so may have personal spaces that have developed completely differently from ours. So um, this is pretty interesting. I basically, hope nobody pops my personal space balloon up in this thing. Yeah, basically, they're, you know, you've know you got a bubble around you and you know it's... It's really determined based off of space, and so they basically did an experiment to determine like what amount of you know space is around you, and so there's you know basically this balloon or bubble around you. So we're all kind of like bubble balloon people walking on around, <laughs> and sometimes I feel like it might have been a good idea if I actually was in a bubble because uh, I think at one point Eddie might have called me Ray the Bubble Boy. Yeah. That might have been a good idea, so I didn't break any more glass. You had so. to bounce off that windshield. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that was the first story. Eddie, why don't you hit him with the next story? Yeah, five people are dead after using a weight loss balloon treatment. Five people who are using an obesity treatment that places balloons inside their stomachs have died since 2016, according to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. The five people died within a month or less of having the balloons inserted. Three people died, or I'm sorry, three died, three of the five died one to three days after the balloon placement. So they got this balloon placed inside of them to help lose weight. And apparently that thing ain't working for shit. I mean, well, actually, it's working really well because they're actually losing a lot of weight now. Yeah, they're they're turning into a skeleton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the uh, process it's like thinner. 
Oh, way Thin- thinner. Thinner. The process involves placing one or two uninflated balloons using an endoscope that goes through a pre- patient's mouth into the stomach. Then saline is used to fill the balloons. The inflated balloons stay there for six months, taking up space inside the stomach so the person feels full. So they kind of got like uh, titties up in their <sighs> stomach, sort of, right? Saline, yeah. They kind of got fake titties in there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, man, you got to be really desperate or lazy or something to, to go through with something like this. I just don't understand yeah. it. I mean, I think that, you know, there are people genetically that are predisposed to obesity and that type of thing. And obviously... Um, there are other ways around it, but I think you get to a certain point and it's like you can't exercise. And um, if you don't have. Well, I understand um, if you're like handicapped, like you can't walk, right. you can't do certain things. But if you're a fully functioning, healthy human being and you're having a balloon yeah. stuck down your throat with saline in it, you deserve to die. I'm going to stop being so lazy. I'm going to I'm going to not agree with the you God deserve to it. die thing. Um, I think that go to the gym. What yeah. are you doing? I think that there's obviously, you know, you know, you're probably not a fully functioning, you know, go buy some vitamins, human Shit. being, if you're, you know, having this surgery. Um, let's also not uh, forget that we had our accordion story, uh, our accordion universal call out, which was like our, hey, these are too easy. Let's do accordion. And then we had a weight loss surgery that they just created with. So what happens? You get a balloon in your stomach full of saline. And you go out to the bar, you start talking shit to some guy, and he hits you in the stomach with a right hand, and all of a sudden that saline leaks out and fucking pops, and it kills you instantly. So I got to go to jail for smacking you in the stomach because you're a retard, because you had a balloon in your stomach trying to lose weight and shit. Fuck that. <laughs> I mean, I think that this is probably there. I'm calling my robot lawyer. <laughs> it's probably it's probably going to be some changes to uh, to this program now. I oh, think that, for sure. Yeah, I mean, five people have already died from it. So not yeah. cool. So, so uh, yeah, this uh, on to the next story. This story isn't from the past week, but we thought we should alert people to it. A registered sex offender was charged after volunteering for Balloon Fest. Uh, this dude in North Carolina, who will remain nameless, uh, was charged with a felony for being on the premises with children while being a sex offender. According to his arrest warrant, he was jailed under a $50,000 bond. The festival has not previously required background checks for volunteers. But the guy said uh, the policy will change moving forward. Hoyle, the guy that runs the balloon yeah. fest. This is just a si- shitty situation where a sex offender just, I don't know if he did it on purpose or what, but it can't be no coincidence. He's volunteering for a balloon fest that is obviously going to have children there. Yeah. And uh, they caught this no, guy. No so doubt. I'm, yeah. I'm very happy about this. By the way, three hours and 19 minutes. Do you what? want to know what that is? Uh, your last orgy. What? I had an orgy three hours and 19 minutes ago. I don't know. I, don't know. I wish. Uh, no, actually three hours and 19 minutes. That is how long it takes for you to get from Raleigh, North Carolina to Bald Head Island in North Carolina. Oh, keep him out of there, please. Do not contaminate Bald Head Island. Right. We do not want Bald. Off. We don't not want this guy in Bald Head Island. So yeah, let's keep him away. It's three hours and 19 minutes away and we don't want him there. So yeah. Stay away, dude. Uh, so, yeah, next up, we have the uh, the man that put a giant chicken balloon with Trump hair near the White House. Uh, so this thing is hilarious looking. Uh, I'm going to play the video here. I'm watching the video of this thing. Um, I, I cannot figure out what this thing looks like. It looks like something, and I can't tie it together as to what exactly it was. It kind of looks like Howard the Duck to me. There was, I, I can definitely see that. There was a few, there was a few things that I thought it looked like some sort of cartoon, and I could not quite figure it out. I was kind of looking it up, and I couldn't get it. So if you guys have seen this thing, I was kind of thinking the Los Polos Hermanos logo maybe from uh, Breaking Bad, but. Um, not quite there at first I was, uh, I was thinking Burger King and the, uh, the King or whatever, but that also was not See, quite right. Now I saw this on Facebook and this was funny. This, this is how you protest peacefully about something. If you don't like Trump, you know, you don't start fights, you don't start riots, you peacefully make a statement. And you make it funny like this one. Absolutely, yeah. This, <laughs> this is was pretty cool. good, man. I didn't. Yeah. I'm not hating on it. I like. I, I, I'm not going to say I like it. You shouldn't be like 
you know, trying to uh, deface the president of the United States at any time. But uh, this was funny. Maybe it, maybe this it, was pretty goddamn hey, maybe, funny. <laughs> maybe it wasn't Trump. You never know. It might not have been Trump. I it think, could be anything, right? Maybe they're just not a big chicken fan. Yeah, I think actually um, the balloon owner, uh, documentary filmmaker Taryn Singh uh, Brar, said he wanted to make a statement about the president being weak. Uh, a weak and ineffective leader. Oh, there so, you go. It was Yeah, that president. was... Uh, so it was actually... So he made a 30-foot chicken. Yeah, that's a great idea. Make a 30-foot chicken. Call this motherfucker a weak and ineffective leader so he drops a bomb on North Korea sooner than later, right? That's a this great This is idea. definitely what we need in this world. We need... <laughs> don't, don't poke him and make him angry. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, that'd be the last thing we I mean, need. this is... he. He's got to appreciate the humor in that, too. I would oh, I'm think, sure so. he liked it. I'm yeah. sure he smiled about it. Yeah. So, uh, Eddie, why don't you hit him with uh, what we got next? Oh, yes. This is the Eclipse balloon. Um, this is a uh, high-altitude balloon that has GPS tracking on it. There's some students. Uh, I'm not sure what school this is from. Uh, I lost the article. Folsom High School. Folsom High School. Folsom High School. Um, yeah, basically, they created This a... was for the Eclipse uh, right. last week, right? Right. It's uh, Well, the Eclipse is coming this Monday, actually. Oh, it's coming up. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, basically they, they got uh, a high altitude balloon with GPS on it, as well as, uh, cameras, four cameras to record the video of the flight, the eclipse shadow and the sun, the balloon will then burst and the parachute, uh, and then parachute back down to the earth where the students will recover it. Interesting. That's kind of cool. You know, I've been reading a lot about the eclipse that's coming up on Monday and I read this article. It's kind of interesting. So, uh, there's a guy from like 1962, which is the last time that this happened. And he actually has permanent, uh, damage in his right eye from looking up with his buddy up at the eclipse the last time it happened. Oh, and so he's basically God. warning people against doing that. See, so. that's another thing with education. Like when I was in school, they told me, do not look at the right. eclipse. Right. <laughs> And so, yeah, people are going to do it anyway, and people are going to fuck their vision up from it. Um, also, the other big thing that they were talking about, too, is that if you point your camera up at the eclipse, try to take a picture of it, it will actually fuck your camera up as well and your phone. So oh, that's great. The amount of people that are going to, like, have fucked up the camera on their phone <laughs> from trying to take a picture of the eclipse. You know Apple and Samsung are like, yeah, go ahead. Take a yeah, picture. Yeah, please. Please do. Please Show do. us your best eclipse pictures. God wink, damn it. Get a, get a cereal box and, you know, whatever other shit you need to make the little uh, viewer thing to uh you know look at the eclipse but yeah i'll be working so i probably won't see it sadly nah. but anyway uh so yeah and then last up we have um i mean this is not that cool of a story but i just thought it was interesting once again uh we had this happen uh i don't remember what week it was i think it was like the oh it was the turtle week and we had um we had the turtle festival that happened like in mexico or something so um yeah there was the 39th annual bristol international balloon festival so uh first thing i wanted to mention is that there was no sex offenders at this thing Thank although God. there might have actually been i there's just no documented ones yeah. Uh, but there was more than 100 colorful balloons of all shapes and sizes scattered across the skyline of southwest England after a mass launch. Uh, thousands of visitors descended on Bristol uh, and blah, 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 blah. Um, it's the <laughs> larging, uh, largest ballooning fat, uh, event. Uh, it's a four-day thing uh, with uh, 130 balloons um, from across the world. So, England. Yeah. What yeah. up, England? Yep. Yeah, they love their balloons over we love you in out there. England. So, yeah, it's cool. Cool. All right, all right. Well, another universal call-out is in the books. Please stay tuned for another random topic at the end of the show. But for now, we are going to head to break and hear from Ray the Jerk and his love for Audible. Ah, you still remember the first time you caught a glimpse of her. How could you forget? You were but a budding blossom, and her equally budding bosom called to you. You felt tingles shivers, shakes, and blood flowing into areas that began to transform with the wafting air of fluorescence. Your very first crush, the local librarian. You imagine the things you would do to her, the things she would do to you, what she looked like beyond those conservative clothes that society surely forced her to wear. Yet, as the years went on, Things began to change. She began to change. You began to change. And so did technology. If only there were a parallel. You want to continue to cram your head full of stories, knowledge, and whimsical fantasies. 
but can't bring yourself to face the withering beauty that once hinted at an unknown primal urge that would consume you. Well now, you'll never have to again. Audible is a new way to read. Scratch that. Listen to your favorite and soon-to-be favorite books in audio form. Audible has over 180,000 audiobooks to choose from. Many are read by famous folks you know and love and are available to you via the free Audible app. With that many choices, you are sure to find a book you are going to love. Now, on to the good stuff. Want a free 30-day trial and a free audiobook? Well, of course you do. You'd be crazy to say no. Head your happy little fingers over to audibletrial.com slash J-O-A-T podcast. Once again, that's audibletrial.com slash J-O-A-T podcast to sign up for your free month and get your free audiobook, courtesy of the jerks. Thank God or the Matrix creating billionaire aliens, you'll never have to be confronted with the fleeting nature of beauty or try and figure out the clearly demonic Dewey Decimal System. All right, guys, we are back. So we have talked about antiquated business models before on the podcast. Talked about malls going under. We talked about the goddamn cable company. No, I'm not signing up. I'm not giving you my information. Yeah. No, please go away. Uh, but this week, uh, we're going to start segment two with another business that is ready to take the death kneel. So let's talk about the rise of the electric car and what's going to happen with all these goddamn gas stations oh. that are everywhere. Crazy. Eddie, let's talk about it. <clears throat> well, this is another progression story. Uh, you know, with the with the gas stations everywhere, there's 168,000 gas stations. That's a lot of gas stations nationwide. Man. Now we have Tesla and Apple, more so Tesla than Apple, uh, making these self driving cars, uh, self driving cars, electric cars, these hybrid hybrid cars. I think the whole point here is that they're trying to move forward with electric cars, and uh, <clears throat> with the rise of electric cars. Over the next 20, 30, 40 years, more cars and maybe all cars are going to be run on batteries instead of gasoline. So uh, we're, they have an article here, Charge Point, Charge Point Incorporated is working to change views on what the charging network of the future will look like. The company has 39,000 charging spots set up in garages, parking lots, and apartments with sev- several hundred of them, which can provide 200 miles of charge in an hour for cars currently on the road and promises much faster fill-ups as car batteries become more advanced. Yeah, this is this is definitely interesting. One of the one of the things that I read, there's a whole interview with this guy, uh Mr. Romano, um what's his first name? Pasquale Romano. And the big thing that he talks about is that so, you know, you kind of got it in your head. You've got gas stations and they're fucking everywhere right (laughs) every two blocks do we just convert these things into charging stations and that's not really the way that this works because what's going to happen is you are going to have a charging port at your house where where you're going to charge your vehicle or at your job yeah or at your job he talks about like you know seeing you know does your wherever you work do they have a charging station for your vehicle Mm -hmm. and so um, this is going to be much more about, it's going to be a completely different infrastructure than it is right now. So there's going to be tons and tons less of these things, you know, the way that you get your vehicle to continue on. So he basically talks about, uh, first off there, I guess there's a lot of these things that are there right now. They've actually got a mobile app, um, that you can download that tells you where there are charging stations for Ooh, your vehicle. Nice. Uh, but he talks about his vehicle right now and how he basically, you know, he finds a charging station and, you know, he, Goes and grabs a cup of coffee, goes and gets lunch, whatever, whatever, and he charges up his vehicle, and then <laughs> like you would charge a cell phone, right? And then he he's out on the road again, and so it's really going to be. I think the difficult thing is going to be not just you know. I, I mean, I think that people are cool with not having to pay for gas. You know, I Hell think yeah. that's definitely you know people are definitely all right with that, but. 
Um, it's going to be about changing the way that you think about how you refuel your vehicle, you know, like how do you get your vehicle to continue on? Um, and it's not going to be just stopping at the gas station where you get your coffee and where you get your scratch offs. You're going to be, <laughs> you know, you're going to, it's going to be a different structure than it is right now. And that's going to be a difficult hurdle to, uh, to get over with, uh, with the, the public, I guess. But if the, you know, yeah, if you start thinking about it more like your phone, um, then you'll probably be okay i can just see it now just like the malls gonna be empty all these gas stations 25 35 years from now all empty there's just gonna be though it's gonna be like a barren wasteland of these empty deserted fucking gas stations let's tear them down let's rip up the concrete let's start uh throwing some grass and some trees and shit down instead right that'd be awesome yeah you know, i'd be I'm, cool, I'm with, cool with that instead of looking at empty gas stations i'd rather be looking at some uh some trees and stuff so there's a whole other angle on this thing too where uh volkswagen actually had basically uh we're developing a monopoly on charging stations uh it was called electrify america charging port um, and so, yeah, they had a big, uh, extensive network that they had created and there was, uh, there was some issue with that because they didn't want one particular company to just have basically like a stranglehold on this because oh, for sure. this is going to be big business. No doubt, man. No doubt. Well, if it, if it's, uh, going to be anything that Nikola or not Nikola, uh, that Mr. Who's the Tesla guy again, Elon Musk, Elon Musk. Sorry, Elon Musk. I forgot your name for a second. If it's going to be anything like he's thinking about, everybody's going to have a freaking electric car pretty goddamn soon so and they're only 35 grand like yeah. these new teslas are only 35k like not bad it's not like a mercedes or a rolls royce or like you know these goofy high dollar cars that you would never actually buy unless you're like you know floyd mayweather or something but uh <clears throat> yeah they're they're super affordable and with the, <laughs> the mere fact that you can charge it at your house eventually you don't have to buy gas anymore. So you're yeah. saving yourself 50, 60, 70. I don't know how much you spend in gas every month. Uh, when I was rolling pretty hard, I was spending maybe 50 bucks a month on gas. So, uh, you yeah, know, I spend that for sure. Yeah. So, you know, 50 bucks a month times 12 months, six, uh, 600 bucks a year. It doesn't sound like a lot, but over the long term, over 10 years, that's 6,000 bucks. What could you, if 10 years ago you got an electric car, today someone's like, here's a check for 6,000 bucks. That'd be pretty sweet, right? No doubt, man. No yeah, doubt. everybody could use a little extra dough. So, you know, I'm all about it. And uh, I just hope that these these gas stations, uh, these owners of these gas stations, because these owners of gas stations are real people. Yeah, And absolutely. some of them are actually really good people. I'm and, sure a lot of them are good people. And I hope that they see the wave coming before it's too late. That's all. I mean, this is kind of, you know, where, once again... Something else is being automated, man. So not just the people that own the gas stations, but I mean, you've got larger gas stations. You know, I go to a gas station called Quick Trip and they've got a ton of stuff there. But I mean, obviously, most people are going there and getting the other stuff because they're getting gas there. Yep. And there is a whole slew of people that work there. And so what happens when people are not going to the gas station for gas anymore? What happens to not only the people that own the gas stations, but... um you know, all the people that work at the gas station. The so, employees, yeah. Um, universal basic income. <laughs> for the win, so. Wink, wink. Yeah. Maybe next week. Nudge, nudge. Yeah. yeah. So Cool. So this next story doesn't worry me as an iPhone user, even though I don't love everything about iPhone. But uh, <laughs> Eddie may have some things to worry about as an Android user. No! So Eddie... I hate to tell you, but uh, prepare for the malware invasion. Oh, man. I thought I was safe. I thought there was no way to crack these damn cell phones. Who would want to hack into a cell phone? But now, Right. Yeah. Why would you want to hack into a cell phone? It doesn't make any sense. You know, people just have, like, all their information yeah. there and well, all their I... <laughs> nudes and uh, all their credit card information. Yes. And, now, yeah. uh, when I first got a cell phone, I was like, this thing will never get hacked into. Who cares about this? But now I got like three bank accounts, my two 401ks, my, like every everything money-wise that is valuable and important to me in my life is on my stupid phone. So, uh, yeah, this is important. It's uh, actually smart. It's not stupid. I, so. I, 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 my phone is stupid. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, well, and it's because it's Android. Yeah. See? There you go. Uh, the, the app Lookout has busted apps with malware. Researchers at the security firm Lookout have identified a family of malicious smartphone apps referred to as Sonic Spy. And that is not the drive-in place where, you know, you get, uh, you know, a burger and fries and, you know, ices and whatever other stuff they have. That's wonder, actually just called Sonic. I wonder I what their logo looked like. I wonder if it was a hedgehog. 
It, it might have been. I, I bet that they probably don't. Eh, they probably have a logo. They might. I don't know. It's hard yeah. to say. Yeah. But uh, at least three versions of the malware, which is able to remotely control infected phones, made it onto Google Play's Play Store. Damn it, Google. Come on, Google. What are you doing? Uh, so according to Lookout, as many as 47 out of 1,000 Android de- devices have encountered, quote unquote, an app-based threat. The latest and greatest to get caught is Sonic Spy. That's the dumbest name I've ever heard of. But uh, yeah, it's pretty silly. It's WTF all day there. Uh, they are the makers of Soniac. I don't know how to yeah. say that. Soniac, I would call it. Soniac. I don't know. No, there's no G in there. But uh, so- Soniac Hulk Messenger. So if you have any of these apps, listen What up. you gonna do, brother, when I hack into your phone with some spyware and run wild on you, brother Jack, dude? Oh, sorry, that was my Hulk messenger. Yeah, don't make Hulk messenger angry because uh, he'll spy on you or something. He will take your, <laughs> he will take your phone. Your phone he'll weighs like 800, your, uh, orgy photos. <laughs> 800 pounds. He will slam it to the mat, crashing it through the mat in front of like 195,000 people at the Pontiac Silverdome. All right, so they got Sonic. And he'll also have sex with your wife and have you uh, film it. So We got Soniac, Hulk you, Messenger, and Troy Chat. All Messenger apps contain the Troy malware. Troy Chat, where you chat with guys named Troy. That's it. Yeah, That's so if you got any th- one of those three, get rid of them yeah. today. Delete. 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 <laughs> and then uh, in the background, the apps are able to hijack a variety of basic phone functions, including making outbound calls, sending text messages, and harvesting call logs, Wi-Fi data, and your contacts. Lookout is thinking that they are all based out of Iraq, but uh, not concrete on that. Yeah, who knows? And the Judy series of cooking and lifestyle games. I know you like that. Oh, yeah, my Judy. favorite. Big Booty Judy. Big Booty Judy, <laughs> cooking and lifestyle. Yes. Uh, it helps you make food that gives you a big booty. Oh, yeah. They all had malware on them, too, but they were busted in May. But uh, if you got any of those Big Booty Judy apps on your phone, get rid of them today. Delete it, delete it, delete it. And then uh, the actors behind this family have shown that they're capable of getting their spyware into the official app store, Lookout Rights, and its build process is automated. That suggests similar deceptive apps could make it into the Play Store again. Yeah, this is uh, so obviously, you know, you've... You know, we had computers for a long time, and people have been re- uh, writing malicious, uh, you know, so, you know, things for them, uh, adware, malware, all that type of stuff. Um, they, you know, cell phones are big business. Cell phones are computers now, and there are a lot of people that don't even utilize regular computers anymore. I mean, everything that they do can be done on, you know, a um, in an iPad or an iPhone or an Android based phone or tablet. And so, you know, think about all the things that you do on your phone. Think about, you know, hey, people, prop, you know, tons of people pay their bills on it and their credit card information is saved on it and all their contacts and all their nude photos and, yeah. uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so, um, you know, mainly the nude photos. And so people are now, you know, these people are focusing their energy on that because, you know, this is how they, they make their living. You know, they, they're basically, um, cyber thieves. And so they're, they're coming for you. And here's the other thing too, you know, yeah, uh, iPhone, you know, is not as susceptible, but I mean, here's the big thing too, with, you know, I talk about, you know, with my Apple computer, I don't have to worry about, you know, having an antivirus and such because most of the time. You know, those things are not written for Apple because, you know, Mac OS X is uh, a very minuscule portion of um, the operating systems that are in use in this country. Most people are using Windows based stuff. But when you look at cell phones, obviously, Apple OS X uh, or iOS is the biggest. Um, Actually, I'd have to look at the numbers, but it's huge. And so if you think that you have an iPhone and that you are not susceptible to this, I'm sorry, you're wrong. I'm sure they're coming for you too. So they're coming for you, brother. They're coming for me. So uh, I hope I don't get any malware while I watch Pornhub on my phone, uh, considering the amount of times I have um, and that I have an iPhone. Although I just, uh, you know, threw, uh, threw information in the face of that uh, comment, but uh, I'm sure I am okay. But uh, yeah, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Pornhub and their study that showed that. Goddamn millennials 
fucking millennials. <laughs> you are ruining everything in the world. Breaking and news. And you don't like big boobs. You like small boobs. Maybe you're not searching for big boobs on Pornhub. What are you doing with your life? This Why actually makes do you not have the same sexual interests as your ancestors? Yeah, I mean, I never given much thought to this until I had a podcast and had to read this article. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, us, we're a little bit on the older, not older side, but we're older than the millennials Back are. In my day. Yeah, so we're used to the whole, like, giant boob. Uh, I had a conversation with, uh, with my buddy about... Uh, you know, and I, I think I did the back in my day thing too. But yeah, you know, I came up in the nineties and uh I came I came I, I came in the nineties. Is that when you officially came up to I, the I 90s? Think, I think I came up in the nineties. <laughs> and so during that era, I mean you, your porn was basically, you know, blonde, big boobs. Um, you know, it was stereotypical what you think of pornography. And yeah. obviously things have really, really changed. Now you have you know, you have tube sites and stuff uh, such as Pornhub, and now people can search for whatever they want. And so they're not just forced to just get uh, the porn, the porn of old. And yeah. so they can, you know, basically find their that own niche. That is true. And porn was a little more scarce back in the day. For sure, man. So you, you didn't have the selection. It was like... Uh, you know, today I feel like, uh, I don't know. Sleep so, porn, sleep maybe. Porn, yeah, maybe. I want yeah. sleep porn today. And, and I don't want her to have big boobs either. She's got to have small boobs, right. sleep porn, got to be Asian, yeah. and uh, not on a bed. I want them on a camping ground. And she's got to be a robot. Uh, yeah, so, like, there's all these, like, different selections. And uh, back in the day, it was like... Hey, whatever got, you could get your hands on, or I got your a hand VCR. On, yeah. Whatever you could get your hands on, and then whatever you could get, whatever hand you could get on your Johnson... That was what was happening. And so you you dealt with what you had. You know, I'm sure back, you know, in the 1950s, you know, people loved the Sears catalog because that's all they had. Yeah, sure. You know, they had the, the bra section. And, These uh, fucking millennials don't appreciate the struggle. Right. The struggle. The that struggle. we had to go through back in the day, the damn VCR. <laughs> oh, we didn't have God. DVD. We had VCR. I couldn't skip to the next scene, God damn it. No. Like, I was just unless I, had I to want, wait. unless I wanted to fast forward, and then the next time I watched it, I had to see like whatever I nutted to the last time. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be confronted with that. God damn it! I'm already ashamed enough that Seriously. I had to do this already. Come but on, the amount of detail this article provides is just crazy, staggering. Yeah, they're saying that the Pornhub is claiming users under the age of 34 search for quote unquote boobs or quote unquote tits substantially less often than the 35 plus crowd so let me ask you a question though let, let me real quick here so people under the age of 34 search for boober tits substantially less and then people 35 and plus search for it more what do we search for we're both 34 god damn it like we oh, are right, yeah, we're stuck we, in the middle they didn't even test us like they no. were like they went like one to 33 or zero to 33 and then they went 35 to like 150 and then that was it and like th we are the one age where we don't know what our porn addiction is, and it's really depressing to me. It's craziness. People between the ages of eighteen and twenty four are twenty percent less likely to look for boobs, and people between the ages of fifty five and sixty four are twenty percent more likely to search for them. <laughs> some good old fashioned silicone fun bags. Let me get them fun bags. A little saline action up in oh, my belly. Let me let me try to think. Uh, it wasn't like a Wendy something like a some something knockers. I, I should have uh, I should have looked these up beforehand. Oh come on, there, there's the, the Zongas. No, like uh, the porn star chick's names was based around the fact that she had giant tits. Oh, it yeah. It was like uh, Wendy Knockers or something. Yeah. And like uh, her, her BFF was like Tiffany uh, Master Boobs or something like that. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah, the name the names back in the day were definitely pretty uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, their so. whole name revolved around the fact that they had huge tits. They had giant tits. And now Wendy Whoppers, I think, was her name. Possibly. And now they see these like young millennial guys and trying to impress them with their giant tits. And they're like, eh, you know, not really all that interested. It's not that you're old. It's that your tits are too big. Yeah, that's uh, – I want to know what – oh, uh, actually, her name was Wendy Whoppers. There it is. Thank Wendy, you. The, oh, that was why you were thinking of Wendy, Wendy, Wendy's and Whoppers. <laughs> Wendy's and Burger King and, coming together in the porn industry. <laughs> Tiffany Knockers yeah. and, like, all this stuff. So, you know, uh, next time we have some people over here, I got to I gotta talk to these young guys uh, and, and see what's going on with this because right. it's, 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 it's fairly interesting to me. Yeah, what is causing the shift in porno priorities? So, yeah, not even Pornhub has the foggiest idea. 
Uh, is it youngsters not liking boobs as much of a result of the big booty Ooh. Judy revolution that has been happening? I do like me some booty. And where do, and where do you think that uh, first started? I feel like the Jennifer Lopez thing was like probably a big start of that. She was the most mainstream. But that was Sir Mix wrote, Sir Mix a lot had the yeah. Uh, he don't want none. I like big butts. And yeah, I can't lie. yeah. You know he don't want none unless you got buns on. So the other brothers can't deny. Yeah. When a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I uh, I've gotten sprung quite a few times, so uh, really, uh, it's really obnoxious when she walks in with itty bitty waist. So disappointing. So uh, it's worth noting that it, uh, while a specific age group appears, according to the available data, collect collectively less interested in tits than any other demos, that doesn't mean that ladies' chest regions are going out of style altogether. Pornhub reports that knocker, uh, knockers related phrases comprise 1.5% of their total searches, which means the quantity of tit oriented keywords typed into Pornhub every day is on average well into the millions. Oh, jeez. So, yeah, the numbers are so staggering that like that 20% ain't shit. Yeah. So uh, still millions of people are searching for boobs, most notably the people from the great state of, wait for it, what is it, Eddie? What state is it? Wisconsin. Goddamn Wisconsin. Number one. Number one. We still love <laughs> our titties. We love our fun bags, bazongas. You know, we're simple people out here in Wisconsin. We like the simple things in life. We you like know? cheese. We like beer. And we like udders. We like to have a good beer, a nice cold beer, nice meal, and maybe some and big a, ass titties and in some the face. warm titties. You know, we did have that picture on Instagram with the motorboating. Yes, we did. So, uh. Here's the, here's the thing. So I have speculated why does Wisconsin love tits so much, and there's only one reason. It's because we are America's Dairyland. We are we are the home of milk, and so we just want some of that sweet titty milk. Nice. That is that is the deal. It makes sense. Yes, it makes yes. sense. That is a fascinating story. Yes, absolutely fascinating. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, last week we had a little bit of fun watching the new Blowjob Robot documentary uh, trailer, which we're actually – I actually found that that particular – it's called We Love Ro- – uh, I think it's called called We Love Robots. Um, and I actually was flipping through Netflix recently, and guess what? It's on Netflix. So hmm. uh, Eddie and I are going to have to watch the sex ro- – or no, My Sex Robot, it's called. Uh, we are going to have to watch and review that thing. So See, Netflix knows what time it is. Oh, they do. They got all the new stuff on Netflix. Yeah. It's time to go to work. Uh, it's not Vader time. but uh, So we figure we keep the ball rolling by watching some fun videos that we found over the past week. So, yeah, we're going we're gonna to watch these videos and react to them. Um, and I actually have not watched any of these videos. Um, I think Eddie has seen a couple of them, um, but he's got one that I picked that he hasn't seen. So good stuff. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's start it off. All right, first video is the. Uh, let me take a look here. Tissue nano transfection from Tech Insider on YouTube. All right. So uh, let me know. Give me the countdown, Eddie. Yep. Three, two, one, play. All right. There's a tiny chip. It can start healing organs almost instantly. Some science is happening. It's being test on, tested on mice and pigs. Uh, it's very small. It's a small black square with like a circle inside of it. You put it on the surface of your skin. Uh, here's a little diagram of what happens on your skin. It applies electrical current into your skin. It changes the genetic code of the skin cells underneath. Um, there's some science stuff happening there. Yeah, it's strange. Uh, altered cells can be used to repair any organ. It's not invasive. Obviously, yeah. you got a don't little, have to swallow anything. A little or, sticker on there. Yeah. Um, seconds to apply just a couple seconds yeah that's more like eight it seems almost like it's too good to be true it healed a mouse's leg that's interesting no blood was flowing through the mouse's leg they have like a diagram with the uh, mouse's uh leg there it's not an x-ray i don't think that's the same uh, thing they showed but uh, they rebuilt the blood vessels into the wounded leg leg of the mouse oh look at his little leg oh completely healed back to normal that's a normal mouse dude that was big yeah so the thing here is we're thinking like uh what can it do for humans yeah and how much is this thing gonna cost right oh my god a lot of goddamn money it's saying also it can cure brain injuries and uh organs and just like it's this small like like half inch by half inch square and that you pick it up with tweezers and you just put it on the affected area and it, it like absorbs into your skin yeah 2018, they're going to start using this thing on humans. I can't wait. Very cool. Very cool. I can't. I'm going to put it on my stomach. Give me some six-pack abs. 
I don't know. If it, I don't know if it works that way. I think it just gets the blood to flow to there. So they actually might be able to use that for people with uh, erectile. With a, dis- yeah, dysfunction? it's erectile dysfunction. Yeah, you get that the, blood. Just get that blood flow and put Hell this little yeah. thing on your dick, and uh, you're good. So usually, just putting a little thing on your dick usually gets uh, the blood flow. So that's pretty interesting, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm down for that. All right, so uh, next thing we got, uh, this is, uh, it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Oh, no. This is a little bit more funny than this the, is the from last video. Little, little Rock, Arkansas. <laughs> uh, let me know when you're ready, Eddie. All right, three, two, one. All right, here's a construction worker guy. Oh, look at those pizzas. He's got a pizza look there. Look at those guys sweeping up those pizzas. Oh, my God. They shut oh, down the road. Shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's a lot of goddamn frozen pizzas. Look at that truck. That trailer is wasted. This is like when you're on the fucking freeway and you're like, why is traffic moving so slow? Yeah. And then you drive up there and you can't oh. figure it out. Here you're like, there's a bunch of frozen pizzas Dude, on the goddamn freeway. They're bulldozing oh these my frozen God. boxes of pizzas. They're not frozen all for over long. The interstate. Were these actually DiGiorno? Do we know that looked like a tombstone yeah, pizza? Yeah, DiGiorno or a and tombstone pizzas. Ooh, he's holding one right there. Oh, yeah. Okay, tombstone. This it, is a bad look for my truck drivers out there, but goddamn, this think, is funny. I think that Nestle actually owns <laughs> both of those brands. So yeah, fuck Nestle. So we won't be able to buy these. Um, ne- yeah. Is that? Oh, is that pizza sauce? That's. Oh man, there's pizza it sauce all like over. It looks like blood, doesn't it? <laughs> it looks like blood, but it's actually just like delicious sauce. Um, so yeah, tractor trailer carrying frozen pizzas impacted the bridge. Um, you got to check those clearances on the bridges. Uh, this guy's saying things. He didn't hit the bridge directly, but the trailer did, and then it opened up the side of the trailer, and then all these frozen pizzas fell out. I would love to see if there was just a bunch of people that were just like running out, like trying to grab as many frozen pizzas as they could. You know, Richard Branson has to be disgusted with this fucking. This is a lot of waste. This is a lot of waste going on right here. People were pretty shaken up. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, this is look at that trailer. It just fucking fell it apart demolished dude. that thing yeah, man. it just it fell apart demolished it's it. the driver's fault he's got to make sure those clearances oh look at as are, you can see there's uh it was pepperoni pizza there's pizza sauce there's cheese right there <laughs> man i'm trying to get a look and at a that. diesel spill what if they find a new pizza that's delicious that's like you know pepperoni cheese sauce and diesel man fucking arkansas man there it is uh so yeah it doesn't say what uh truck company it was but uh, yeah that's all right so yeah there it is um and now we got last one uh, oh, let, this one's mine, right? No, this is the this is or this is for me, right? This is for you. All right. This is uh this is the ta ta towel. All right. Let me preface this. I haven't seen this yet, so this will be my uh, reaction to this. It's only thirty three seconds, so yep. let's take here a look it is. Here. This Three, is the ta ta towel advertisement. Two, one, play. Ta ta towel. Keep them high. Keep them dry. <laughs> as you would want to. Oh, oh she's pretty hello. attractive. Yeah, no bra. Fuck, fuck the That's bra. Right. She's dropping the bra. bra. Oh, we can, shit. We can hang out without a bra. Look at this thing. I ain't wearing one either. Oh, my goodness gracious. So, so we got, yeah, it's like a little, wait, I, I want to rewind it, but I'll let it go. So it's like a little V-neck, but reversed. It, right. go, it, goes, it goes around, around the back, the back of, neck. of the neck there. You can tighten it up around the boobs, over the. You Put take it on the, your titties. Take the bra off, wrap this around your neck. Oh, that's it. There you go. You, you take the bra <laughs> I'm baffled. I need to watch that again. Yeah. Mainly because, ta, ta, ta. you know, she's half naked. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So she's uh, letting you know you can get rid of your bra. You take this thing. It looks pretty fuzzy. It looks like it would probably feel pretty decent. So is this a replacement for like a bathing suit? I'm not sure. I think that this is something you would wear like at home, maybe. I'm, I'm not really Maybe sure. it's like really comfortable for chicks. Yeah. And maybe you, this you can is like tighten it up thing. in the back, too. So depending yeah, that, on the size of your titties and like how tight strap. you want it to be. Um, yeah, there it is. It's, it reminds me of like a, a really weird wonder bra. <laughs> yeah. It's pulling them up and like, you know, they're not squishing them together though. They're pulling them apart. So, uh, ta, 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 towel.com. If you want to get your own ta, ta, towel. Hashtag not sponsored. We are not sponsored by ta, ta, towel. I want to make that very, very clear. But that would make a great gift for uh Christmas maybe or something. Yeah. If you got a girlfriend that, yeah. you know, is, doesn't like bras. So yeah, if you don't want to spo- uh if you don't want to swallow any frozen DiGiorno with pepperoni and cheese and diesel fuel, then we have something entirely different for you to swallow. Eddie, make sure they don't choke on social media. No, that's gonna be tough. We got a whole lot of social media for you. First of all, let's just say you can hit us up here at the Jerk of All Trades Podcast. Jerk of all trades podcast at gmail.com. We read all your emails every week. Absolutely. Say what's up, and uh, we say what's up right back to you. Uh, make sure you visit the official website of the Jerk of All Trades podcast. 
joatpodcast.com. The we got- best place to listen to the jerk of all trades. And I also want to mention, check out the new support page. Yes. We've got it updated and we need you guys to donate to us so we can take a little vacation because we've been working hard every week to bring you the very best in podcasting. And we need to take a vacation, a little excursion to Bald Head Island. I can't and wait. So please donate to us and help us make that a reality and we will podcast live from bald head island yeah we got a we got tabs up there we got support tab we got blog tab we got show notes on there yes. you can see scott steiner flipping somebody off on the show Boom. notes a lot of the uh too hot for instagram stuff will be going on to the joat podcast absolutely it's so growing there's going to be so make, much more don't forget there. to check it out don't forget to, to take a look at that so Yes, and that, yeah, and follow. Speaking of Instagram, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and like us on Facebook. We're on all social medias. You can't not miss us. That's a double negative, and, so you can miss us. Don't miss us. And uh, just put j- jerk of a, and we're in there because if you put jerk of, it's gonna be like jerk off stuff. So yeah. don't click on any of that jerk off stuff, and make sure you unless find you want to, unless you jerk uh, of all trades yeah, podcast, unless you're looking at the ta ta towels. Or Pornhub. And also, make sure you subscribe to us on Stitcher, iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, anywhere and everywhere. You get your podcast. You can subscribe to us. Please leave us a review if you so choose on the iTunes. And uh, also, one last thing. We're also uh, subscribe to us on Twitch. Twitch TV dot or Twitch dot TV slash J-O-A-T podcast. Having a lot of fun on Twitch. We try to share as much as we can with you guys. We try to uh, incorporate anybody and everybody that wants to play with us. And uh, we're having a good time on Twitch Absolutely. with that Jackbox. And so you know what? It, yeah, if you've got a game that you want us to play, uh, just of my own personal uh, free time that I barely have, I've been playing a lot of Friday the 13th, so maybe I'll start doing some JOAT live oh, streaming yeah. on Friday the 13th. Hell yeah. Uh, I'm terrible, but it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> that's, I like that's doing it. That's the fun it. of it. Yeah, so that's the fun of it. If you've got it. a game that you want us to play, you know, let us know, man. Let us know. Yeah, that new Madden comes out. Less than a week. Yeah, so we'll, we'll stream some Madden. We might have to have some ass-whooping Madden games going on here. Absolutely. So that's pretty much it, man. So uh, as usual, we got some uh, Inspirobot for the win. Yeah. So let me go ahead and... Uh, are you ready for that Inspirobot, Ray? Yes. You want to go first this week? You go first this week. All right. I'll go first this week. And my Inspirobot says... All right. We got the couple on the bench... It looks like they just got married. It looks like a wedding dress is being worn here. By both people or just one? Just the woman. Okay. And uh, it says... <laughs> it's 2017, man. <laughs> you want to wear a wedding dress and you're a groom, do it. Where murderers end, comma, thought begins. Whoa. There you go. That I did not understand. In Spyrobot. That was... I hope these two people didn't murder anybody. <laughs> <laughs> they might have. Here we go. Here's my... And now they're starting to think about stuff. All right. What seems appreciated to an artist seems underappreciated when you're awake. Hmm. Is that because when you're an artist, you're always on drugs? Yeah. Yeah. You definitely are dropping hits of acid on the rag. And so, you know, you appreciate it. And, oh, man, this is hurting my brain. There's a guy jumping on a mountain, it looks like. Um, it looks like he's going to get really hurt. So Jumping on a mountain. Oh, whoa. I just noticed, too, that you can now, on Inspirobot, you can now, there's uh, three tabs below the social media, and it says print on a t-shirt, print on a poster, or print on a mug. Oh, they're trying to get that money, bro. Yeah, yeah. So you can actually get your favorite Inspirobots onto, you know, whatever your, uh, whatever, you know, you want it on your coffee cup, you can get it. You want it on a poster on your wall, you can get it. So uh, Inspirobot, we love you. Absolutely. All right, so uh, yeah, let's uh, let's go home. Let's uh, let's do the universal call out. Hell yeah! So eight topics, phobias, topics. What are we doing this week, Ray? Uh, we're just gonna do topics. Topics has okay. been good to us. So sure, we're going eight. Right. Um, and let's do it. All right, we got nurses, tigers, smoking, cheese, freaks, sailing, volcanoes, and Asia. Oh, there's like three good ones there. There, I like three of those. I like volcanoes. I like freaks, and I like what was the second one? Uh, t- 
tigers. Nurses. Tigers. I like, like tigers. tigers. Yes. I actually agree with you. I like tigers. So I like tigers. That's, you a like new, tigers. that's a new one. If you like tigers, I like tigers. Unanimous. Unanimous this week. No rock, paper, scissors this week. We got tigers for the universal call Hell out yeah. next week. And Please be don't maul stories. anybody, tigers. Yeah. <laughs> We just want to learn some cool shit about yes, you. Yes, yes, but you might maul some people. So, <laughs> yeah, if you're around tigers in the next week and you're listening to the podcast, just know that... Stay away from tigers this yeah, week. Yeah, don't go around tigers, okay? If <laughs> don't go to the if zoo. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're going to go to the zoo, don't go to the zoo. Wait until after we do the next podcast. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's it. We're we are done for the week. We love so, you guys. Yes. Thanks for sticking with us. Absolutely. And uh, we will be back, man. Yes, J-O-A-T is outie.